The rocks tell the extraordinary story of what happened next. Above the barren lair, new signs of life. We know that very few animals that were present prior to the extinction here survived it. I just found a carnivorous mammal-like reptile in strata that we have just above the mass extinction. This is a creature that has survived it. The mammal-like reptiles look like crosses between dogs and lizards. But they weren't the only survivors. Two lineages that get through have tremendous consequences later in time. Both are pretty small in size. They start evolving because the world is empty and empty worlds really begat tremendous amount of evolutionary diversifications. Of all the skulls in this museum, this is my favorite. This creature leads to the dinosaurs. At the same time that it exists in the earliest Triassic period, right after the mass extinction, we find a second small carnivore, very different. This little skull is the species that leads to us. Two of these predators, the small mammal, the larger reptilian creature that becomes the dinosaurs, really duke it out in head-to-head -head competition. In the Triassic period, there's a clear winner, the dinosaurs. It took around 20 million years for the first dinosaurs to evolve, on their way to the giant creatures we think of today. Dinosaurs get big, they're baroquely diverse with all kinds of weird adaptations with armor, with predatory animals, with bird-like animals. The dominant animal features of the landscape. Mammals just scurry around in the shadows. Uh, they're, they're small, shrew-like or rat-like in many ways. They look like some of the least dramatic things we have today. This is about as big as they get. This is the skull, and you can see the front teeth here. It's really no larger than a squirrel, or what we would call a small mammal today. It contrasts dramatically with some of the smaller skulls. This encompasses practically the entire size range of mammals during the time of the dinosaurs. Like many of their descendants today, the mammals survived by being nearly invisible. They were nocturnal. They scavenged. They reproduced quickly. Mammals are beginning to get better developed brains. The eyes are becoming larger. And even in the skeleton behind the skull, we see a number of very interesting transitional features. In the pelvic region, there's evidence of splint-like bones that suggest support for the abdominal cavity. And this probably supported a pouch, very much like living marsupials, like opossums and kangaroos. A transition between a more primitive egg-laying behavior and a more advanced behavior, a more advanced reproduction that we see in today's placental mammals like us.